recording and bada bing bada boom we are on and we are live it is the caleb jackson podcast the podcast that is so full and will keep you hopeful here i'm here with you have a band name kathy Bolin. just oh, my name just, just your yeah. name miss kathy Bolin here and then mr jared here yeah my good old guitars mcnulty guitars was that you said mcnulty mcnulty guitars what'd you say no he's a lead guitarist oh lead guitarist yeah. okay <laughs> I, I, I heard something completely different excuse me so let's start with you jerry because i don't know you at all so you said you're from spring texas yeah how long have you been playing guitar for Ooh, third grade fourth grade okay so how old are you right now 26 so yeah so you've been playing literally most of your life he's already you? teaching his son too Really? Like yeah. a little baby, mm. baby guitar. This is a little two-year-old. I built him a little mini Telecaster. Okay. He's already getting it a little bit. No, he just, <laughs> he he's just. He's totally going to surpass Jared one day. I don't think it's going to take long. You don't think so? <laughs> well, I can feed him knowledge I taught myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like father, like son. Oh, yeah. Apple don't far, far from the tree, and the trees grow very close together, too. Yeah. I've I realized that, too. Oh, yeah. I have a friend, one of my best friends, both of our dads from, from Florida. So I was like, oh, the apples don't far, far from the tree, and the trees go very close together. Yeah. You know? Small so, world, right? Exactly. That's what I said. That's crazy. So it's, it was crazy when I saw that you were performing, because I, I was, just like I was saying earlier, I remember, like, even after work, like, when we'd all hang out and stuff, and you just pull out your guitar and start playing randomly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I was known in College Station as the girl who brought the guitar to parties and played live music. Yes. And I feel like... They're so like live music is dying, and so it was rare to have somebody who did play. And I think that's I, I'm pretty sure I only got invited to parties because of it. But I'll take it. So See, I, I just uh, it was fun. It was so cool because uh, you were so good at it, and you oh, had the, you. what what app did you have? You had this. Oh app. my gosh, Ultimate Guitar Tabs. I still yes, use it. Yes, I actually put my own songs on there now too. Cause I remember you had your own songs on there, and then you started playing. Uh, I think you played. Was it Chris Stapleton when we were sitting there? Oh my god! I think it was me, you, Drew, Bray. Um, it was a it was a good time. That's all I remember. I'm trying to remember whose whose house was this at. It probably had to be Drew's house. This okay. Was, this was five years ago. So. God, we're getting old. That's what I said. <laughs> like you said, you're 26 now too, right? Yeah. I just turned 25. Yeah. So. Time it's fucking, insane oh, yeah. and really i haven't seen you since post pandemic like even since yeah, the COVID since started. i moved mm -hmm. so you, you moved it's to been, kansas when oh my god i think it's it's been two and a half years now damn no that's two and a half years since i moved back so it's been about three years so you moved in 2021 sure yeah okay something like that yeah okay we'll say Close that enough. okay and dang so how long have y'all been performing together, personally? Like a year. Yeah. I think it's been about a year. Um, I actually knew him from his other band because I had gone and seen him at a house party they were playing at, and repping his other band on his shirt too as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You go ahead and rep for the camera too if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're about to get some t-shirts out and make you wear my t-shirts instead. <laughs> So is it just y'all that perform together? or you uh, We do a lot of acoustic shows, but mm. I do have my own full band as well. Okay. Um, but it's just so hard to get full band shows, especially around the Brenham area, mm -hmm. which is where I'm from. Um, and so they do a lot of acoustic sets. And so I can get acoustic shows like no other out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll play, oh my gosh, we will like the five shows that we play in a month they're all acoustic for the most part yeah. i mean i've started doing song swaps with people but um i have no problems just getting us to play some acoustic shows okay yeah so do you find acoustic shows easier to do well obviously they're easier because you don't have to move everything yeah but what, what do you prefer like uh, when it comes to the actual like what you're putting out there to the crowd I think it just depends on the crowd, honestly, because we'll get people going on acoustic shows. Mm -hmm. There's no problem with that. Like last weekend at Burton Shortstop, we had the oh, whole yeah. place like whooping and hollering, mm -hmm. um, which is insane for country music. So it, it's kind of cool. That and Burton, because Burton's yeah, I know. a small ass town. <laughs> I know. You get all the locals <laughs> out there and the you party. keep them there. No, they do. They <laughs> really do. There's nothing else to do out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think full band shows are a lot more fun because of... I don't know, like a full band show, the sound is a lot greater than what you get with an acoustic show. You, you've got that oomph from a bass and a 
and drums uh, yeah. instead of just guitars trying to make up for that you know? i'm a bass person so yeah. like, i like the that bottom the just the bottom flow between it that yeah. you don't necessarily i catch it that's usually like my melody that i'm going off of yeah. whenever i'm bopping my head at things it's usually like the bass guitar so so how many good so you have the acoustic the bass the drums you have a pianist as well or? no there's okay. just four of us so okay. i play um uh, just like strumming guitar and then he does all the lead stuff okay but yeah. So yeah. Ha- have y'all recorded any music uh, official like recordings? I have my own song out right now that's mm-hmm. been out for I think a year and a half now, but we are actually that's what we were talking about before this started that uh, like I've got cash in hand ready to go to find a recording studio and we've mm-hmm. got music ready. Um and we play a couple of those songs at my shows already. Okay. But we don't have anything out quite yet. Just just the one single. Yeah. And where can we find this single? Uh, oh my gosh, it's streaming everywhere. It's on uh, Spotify, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple Music. Uh, Apple Music. So I, God, there's another one that's, I don't know. I don't even remember what some of them are called. That's everywhere you can find the Caleb Jackson podcast yeah. too as well. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess for, I was thinking of questions before y'all came here. And uh, what, what kind of ushered this era for you in getting like actually like chasing that dream and like actually starting to perform and like get out there moving back mm. um when i moved back from kansas i really put a lot of focus into myself and healing my own mental health mm-hmm. and music was always something that i loved to do but when i was really low in life i kind of quit it and i knew that that was something that brought me joy and i didn't want to give it up. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I really dove deep into it and realized that I wanted to do it the right way this time because I feel like I took a lot of wrong paths the first time that I did it. And I didn't get very far. And so when I started doing it this time around, I really focused on making sure that I did everything right. And it has gotten me 10 times farther in such a short amount of time than as far as I got in the last 10 years before that. So... We sound like the same person in two different ways <laughs> when it comes to the podcast and your music and yeah. how you're a perfectionist to a to like a almost like yeah. drastic degree. Yes. So. I think you have to be mentally ready for it though too, because like mm-hmm. this is not for the week. It takes up so much of your time. Mm-hmm. And there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that people don't know about. Even traveling alone. Yes. Yeah, like having to yeah. move everything. Even like doing my podcast, like yeah. having to just move equipment and just even get there in the first place and set yep. up everything. Well, just for an acoustic show, just for us too, we show up an hour and a half early. So that's like going, driving for an hour, having to show up there an hour and a half early and then tear down. Mm-hmm. I mean, that takes, a we, which we've gotten to the point where we're pretty quick with it. We can yeah. get it done with them. Last like, weekend was like, well, we have an hour left. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. We, we've gotten really good at it because we just know the groove. But um, it, it like there's just so much time that it takes. And then mm. we're working on a gig for Pennsylvania right now. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're getting we're going places. Wow. Now. <laughs> what part of Pennsylvania? Uh, it's near Hershey. I think this is like Anvil or something. OK. Um, there's not a date set yet. I'm still talking with them. They like country music up there. Yeah. Really? There's not a whole lot of places. So that's the cool thing is the the few places that they do have everybody goes to mm-hmm. because there are so few places. Oh. So that's that's the key is to find it where it's scarce and just kind of like just hit it with with iron where iron's not hot I guess yeah yeah so like yeah. wherever like you people don't know is the best way to like well, yeah because like I avoid Nashville because it's so saturated with country that makes musicians more s- okay that makes more sense because like you're no different than the person next door that you don't stand out hmm and that way okay so you got to play the strategic game basically yeah mm. oh my gosh the whole music scene is just a business it's a game, honestly i have so many friends that make music and produce yeah. and do stuff with it and even them trying to get not only get gigs but then like actually putting their music out there and promoting it yeah it's just so there's it's nerve wracking it's ner- not only nerve wracking but energy draining yeah but also just it's a cycle it just goes just goes like that over and over yeah mm-hmm. promoting and booking gigs in itself is a full-time job and you're and your own promoter too right? yeah i do everything myself yeah. yeah there have been multiple nights because i was doing school and finishing up my associates at the same time while i was working my full-time job and doing music basically full-time mm-hmm. and i would i would fall asleep in the middle of quizzes at 1 a.m in the morning because i was just so exhausted mm-hmm. um 
I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's rewarding. It's an accomplishment, but it, it gets draining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before, before I ask this question, I wanted to ask how long have you been performing for as well? Um, four years now. Okay. So wh- when was your first performance? Like, do you remember the day? Um, it was in April of 2021. Mm-hmm. No, no, it was way before that. It was probably like 2020. It was when COVID first started getting bad is when the other band got together as a group. Mm-hmm. And then uh, somebody knew somebody that was a manager at yesterday's and we ended up getting in there and we played and then it was like, hey, we can make money doing this. So we started kind of reaching out and finding different places to play and y'all country western as well uh, it's more of like a southern rock southern okay they're like same music but a little grungier <laughs> okay i was that was the question i was gonna ask about yeah. um so many different genres of country because you have like yes. you have southern country but would you classify southern rock in that same genre no no i wouldn't so this is like a whole dilemma we've as a group had for the past three years or so is what kind of music do we play and we can really only narrow it down to what people have called it. So there's a guy that recorded an EP that we put out uh, last October. And uh, he said we sounded like Texas Weezer, if you remember who that is. Yeah. But uh, there was that, and then other people said, like, country rock. Mm-hmm. So, like, a uh, country rock. Like a... Uh, that seemed like a co vibe. Is that what you're saying? Kind of like if a... Uh, Co Wetzel met Leonard Skinner type yeah. deal. Uh, the first name that came to my mind was Jason Aldean. Was that no? Uh, no. So that's a totally <laughs> that's different, to- that's totally different country genre. Okay, I think that's what they'd consider like Nashville country. Okay, so it's like, a little more modernized. Hmm. And in Texas, we have still more of that. Like yeah, actual... Texas is well, Texas. You've got like the old country style. You've got the red dirt. You've got the Americana. You've got like uh, well, and I know in our shows, uh, the set list that I made up. Um, I try to incorporate a little bit of all of them because like even 90s country is a different country. Yeah, no, it's all changed. Like just every decade, it seems like for the yeah. past pretty long time, you'll have like what started with Hank Sr. and stuff like that. And that was one sound. And then that moved on to the 70s and 80s sounds. And then yeah. you got the 90s, which bridged into pop country pretty much and that yeah. was like your hey good looking and that like kind of like yeah. yeah okay yeah and see growing up i my dad played a lot of blues like straight blues so like, like muddy waters john lee hooker uh a lot of that old stuff you know, howling wolf too mm-hmm. and so i grew up on a lot of that like i guess blues kind of and so then when i started listening to country music especially coming from texas i just kind of gravitated towards that like blue like i guess bluegrass what they call it yeah okay. i don't know if blues and bluegrass i guess are kind they, of yeah they're kind of like some of the guitar scales are interchangeable mm-hmm. but uh now i get what you're talking about with like the bluesy country it's definitely mm-hmm. its own sound is that like a would you say like chris stapleton kind of thing yes or what, okay i would say chris stapleton has more of like a you got you, like soul in yeah it, would you say you like know? country soul is a is a genre or like if a you subsection? said that to me and asked me to play a country soul song i'd probably know what you're talking about so sure we'll we'll, we'll call it that. it's probably just another one in itself i feel like you can make any you, you can really find any artist and throw them into the, like whatever genre or whatever category you can because like chris stapleton for instance he makes like those um well just his voice alone has that like rasp to it yeah and so with your voice you're more of just like a uh you define yourself as just straight country yeah okay yeah i've mm-hmm. been told i have like a radio voice it's very smooth and radio i wish voice. i had the rasp i love when my voice goes away because i'm like oh i sound like a different person this is mm-hmm. great and you kind of like make different scales with your voice and kind of yeah. do things differently a little bit yeah I, oh. it's like for, uh, like i know there's sometimes where I can sing lower versus higher, and that totally changes how a song even sounds. How high can you go? Oh, probably not that high. I'm an alto, okay. so. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> so they, you had, when I'm trying to remember choir, you had alto, tenor, uh, soprano. They, soprano. oh my gosh, I did church choir, and they always tried to put me in soprano. I'm like, I cannot sing these notes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Soprano is all the way, like, I know, all the way up, right? I know, yeah. And then your tenors are going to be your lower. Your Those lower. are all the guys, you know mm-hmm. that. Most of the time. You didn't do choir? No. Uh, you were just instrument kid, huh? 
Yeah, I just play <laughs> guitar. I told him I'm going to get him a mic for on stage since he doesn't sing. And because uh, he's got some crazy jokes that he'll throw up there. Mm. And so I was like, well, the rest of the crowd needs to hear this. But it's a good an extra element, especially for a show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just having someone up there, almost like a almost like a uh, like with albums, they do skits between the the show, the um, actual songs yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just like an on stage skits, basically. And it keeps yeah. that like um, that intermission almost. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It, it, it keeps engagement a lot. That's why I've been so happy. We've had some people lately. Um, I've had some friends come out and they'll play during our 15 minute breaks. And it's such a game changer because the live music keeps going instead of having to stop the live music, play the recorded music and then go back to it. People start talking, people yeah. get up, go get drinks, go yeah. get food. And then they come back and the energy, the energy is always different when people come back to hundred percent. You know, it's one thing, I guess uh, being on stage and you see that energy switch, what do you, like, how do you react to it? I guess. Uh, I have to read a crowd 24 mm-hmm. seven. I think that is part of the job of being a musician and the one who, is deciding what songs we play next. Um, I have my set list that I'll go off of, but I'm not afraid to say, hey, I'm not feeling this song right now. Are you feeling it? I'll look over at Jared and say, hey, we should just skip this one. Let's go to a faster one already, you know, because we need to bring the crowd up. Um, But I think, honestly, the set list is in a pretty good, I guess, order. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because, like, our third set that we play we'll take two 15 minute breaks and a three hour set and our third set we come in with like a like a bunch of 80s and throwback songs Mm. um and that usually gets the crowd going because by that time they've had quite a few drinks they want something a little different other than country and it's just um it's it's a good change of pace um and then we'll end it out with country again but yeah i think it's definitely important to be able to read the crowd and just know when even though something's on your set list, like be able to adapt and change to the crowd. So how do you read a crowd yourself? I see whether people are singing and watching. Um, It's hard to confuse when people are talking as to whether they're actually enjoying the time or not. Um, And I think that's been something that I've been trying to figure out how to get a crowd engaged, especially in an acoustic show. Um, Because people go there and they expect to listen to an acoustic show, not to be a part of the show, you know? That's why I was wondering when you said acoustic versus a full band. Yeah. Because, like, especially keeping that, uh, like, just the, the drums engage people so much more. Yeah. Uh, it was, we were watching Dave, the Chappelle show the other day. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about how... Um, with white people, it was the joke was with white people, you can play electric guitar and everybody start dancing, right? Yeah. So they went to a black barbershop and did the same thing and everybody's like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> so then they turn, the, they turn the drums on, right? He said, but why start the drums? And they start playing drums. All black people are like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's the, it's with that same thing, I was like, so how do you get that that different distinction between a full band crowd and an acoustic crowd and like how you get them to move. I think it's the mm. songs all together. Com- like to be completely honest, if you play songs that people know and enjoy, or if you have a song with a good beat in itself that doesn't necessarily need um, the bass or drums, then you're already one step up. Um, there's only so much you can do sometimes because you can't make a crowd do what they don't want to do, you know? Mm. But I, we really have not had too many problems lately um we've had pretty good engagement at most of our shows uh i also when i book gigs i pay attention to the venues um because i will go and do research on that venue before i book there to see if we're even going to be liked what kind of crowd they bring in um and if that crowd is actually going to enjoy what we do Mm. so i think it's there's so many little pieces that go into the the build-up process before even playing the show to be able to Make sure that that works. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, at this point, could you see yourself having a promoter other than yourself? <laughs> I can't afford one. <laughs> that costs I, money. It's, yeah, but I, I guess, like, the same thing I'm doing, like, with the podcast, too, in that same breath, you get your own system down yeah. to the degree where you can just have someone else come in and be like, hey, this is what I like, this is what I do, this is yeah. how it goes, yeah. you know? And it's, like, almost like a template, like a protocol, almost. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So... I guess within the next year or so, how far do you see yourself going? I don't know. Honestly, I have an ultimate goal of just having enough gigs to where I can support myself financially and be comfortable. Um, But I also, whenever I started, when I moved back, I told myself that I 
wasn't going to necessarily have a long-term goal. I wanted to focus more on the short terms, the ones that I could achieve. I mean, again, I have that ultimate long-term goal, but I'm focusing more on the short term and it's gotten me a lot farther that way. Like I've made more connections than I have trying to pursue just myself. Like I want to enjoy the ride along the way, you know? Mm. So... And so, same for you. How has like your life, uh, things in your life, and like having your son, uh, moving jobs, how has that affected you and how you look at your music and how you have to take it and go with it? Um, not gonna lie, I've taken off work early a couple times for earlier <laughs> gigs, and mm-hmm. I'll just tell them, "Hey, I don't feel good. I need to go home." But <laughs> you do not. Well, whenever there's two hours left in the day and we make what we make playing music, yeah. it doesn't make sense to stay there and miss that. You know? Yeah. But, uh... I mean, I guess I don't feel as good when I really need a drink, too. So, that is a good excuse. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, it's, uh... It's a ride, for sure. But, yeah, with my son, it was... Like, when I first started performing, it was easy to go to practices. It was easy to go to shows. I didn't have to think about that kind of stuff. But, uh... Now that I got him, obviously we try to plan out in advance so I can either say, hey, mom, can you watch him or find somebody to watch him. Um, But yeah, it's a struggle because even with like the writing music, if I pull out my guitar, my son's coming up to me trying to play with it. It's Mm -hmm. like, I'm trying to do something. Yeah. I can't just tell him no all the time. I don't want to discourage him, Mm -hmm. get him away from that. That's what we just started figuring out for practices too. We started like a back and forth with going to my house versus his house mm. and working on originals at my house and doing covers at his. Jeez, so. I forgot y'all got to practice during this too. Yeah. Like how? That's, like, yeah. In fact, during a practice schedule along with a, Jesus Christ. It's so much. I, yeah. Oh. That's because I don't have to practice. I, I don't practice podcasting. Yeah. That's the thing is that like every podcast I do is just off rip. So I can't imagine having to at least, and how long do y'all's practices last? Three uh, hours. You say two and three? a half, two and a half, three. He's is you're is cap, lying. capping a little bit. Oh no, oh my gosh, they so do I'll show actually up at last seven and leave at nine thirty. Holy cow! Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, they last that long, but that's only rehearsal. That's not even practice. Like you have to practice outside of rehearsal because rehearsal is spent working together. But you have to know your individual parts outside of that too. Sounds like football all over. Yeah. <laughs> like we had like three days of practice and then like before games is nothing but rehearsal actual like going over plays and just yeah. rehearsal, which took in rehearsal. What would you say was more, um, I guess, uh, taxing rehearsal or the actual practice? Practice. Yeah. It gets mm-hmm. mentally draining, especially if you're trying to cram yeah. for something. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like you'll play something a hundred times. And then think, okay, I got this down. And then you've just smashed it into your head so much that you go to play it and you just, you'll mess up or don't remember stuff. So there's really, there's only so much you can do in X amount of time. Otherwise, it's just well, then you all, yourself out. You have to be on the same page, too. Like yeah. when you're working with other people, you have to be on the same page mm-hmm. to make it sound like it works together. Yeah, like with the acoustic sets, playing with Kathy, when we first started doing acoustic sets, I was kind of nervous because. Before that, my only real experience with acoustic sets was not good because I played with people that couldn't keep rhythm. And when you're trying to play lead and your rhythm's all out of time, Mm. it just doesn't work out. You'll go into one part of the song and then they're on the next part when you're halfway through that. But My dad's a drummer. I would get my butt beat if I couldn't keep rhythm. No, you keep rhythm really well. (laughs) And it's appreciated. (laughs) I mean, rhythm, rhythm is everything. Is you know because you break uh, even like uh like I said, same thing with video editing but it, like it, you find that rhythm and you just eat off of it. Well, not only that, but even with the crowd, rhythm and beat is the first thing that people recognize because there's a lot of people who, like, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but there's like people who can't hear pitch and tone, mm-hmm. but they can hear a beat and they know if something's sped up versus slowed down. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that. I guess involves everybody. Uh, when you said that people, some people can't take, uh, can't hear a uh, pitch or tone, uh, not, not even like as a derogatory thing. I just think some people can't even do that with talking. You know, yeah. so like yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't even call it derogatory. Just some people really just ain't well, got it no, like that. Like my mom can't hear pitch hmm. um, at all, and and like she knows it, but she she loves live music. Don't get me wrong, mm. but like she's not afraid to tell people, I can't hear if a note is off. 
or like if i try to sing the same note you, as you it just doesn't come out right that's you know? crazy yeah some people can't hear it if a yeah. note's off or something because uh, you know like as, i guess as growing up around music and stuff like that because you grew up in church and stuff yeah and went in choir you grew up in church and going to choir and stuff grew up going to church mm-hmm. but were you in the choir or did you ever have no. any okay never really did anything i just sat at home played guitar that's even better honestly <laughs> like self I honestly like, get paid to play at churches <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> no I remember, I remember being inclined to like learn the drums and stuff because like you're saying rhythm i was think the first that's thing. everybody's first thing because like mm-hmm. everybody can understand drums and a beat and the rhythm yeah and so so um I guess what's the distinction between a rehearsal and a practice? Because with a rehearsal, I guess you're just going over songs and a set list and just kind of going based off of what you're about to do the next night. Yeah, you just run through it. But Mm. if you're practicing, that's... You shouldn't be learning a part at rehearsal. Yeah, Mm. that's okay. Yeah, so that's what practice is for. Mm. Mm. You should already know it. So that way you can take the next step of, again, making sure that it meshes with everybody that's there Cause, and playing. Because when you, when you, that day before you're trying to throw in new things, it's just too confusing. You're only as good as your worst person, too. Mm-hmm. So if that one person is still trying to learn their part and they just can't catch up because they didn't practice outside of rehearsal, then like you've now left the rest of the group at your level mm-hmm. because you didn't practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That can be real bad. That's like that band I was telling yeah. you about. Me and Tiffany went and saw... And it was just like their guitar player was practicing. And I was like, Yeah. Man. It shows. And it shows. And this was a live show, too. Yeah. So, yeah. As, as another guitarist, I was like, the first song he played, he had a couple mess ups. There wasn't too intricate. So I was mm-hmm. like, Okay. Well, I mean, everybody slips up a little bit. Nobody else probably heard it. And then song two, three, four. And it's just like, you what can are you see doing? it too when people aren't in sync and you can you can feel yeah the vibe no i, I felt bad though so Do you, you feel the chemistry of the band like on stage yeah, yeah no you have to be in sync otherwise people people can tell that's what's really great so with both bands really like especially more with the other because we've played more but if somebody's about to mess up on something everybody else knows it so they adjust to cover it up mm-hmm and I think that's what a lot of it is whenever it comes to chemistry with the band. Like yeah. Kathy was saying, if you don't all mesh well together, it's not going to be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are the elements into like choosing guitarists and different like different people in your band? Like, uh, I guess from a, um, is there anything like, what's the best way for me to say this? Do you have to take the well, one thing I'm learning with my podcast is how to take that personal side of it out there, out of it. Do y'all yeah. how much do you view it from that personal and business standpoint and having to like play with that and I'm like just purely like a working standpoint. I actually took a lot of the same tactics that I had when I worked at HEB that people mm. told me they liked about me being a manager there. Mm. Um which was first and foremost like i'm your boss but i want you to feel comfortable with telling me things and opening up Mm. um so i feel like you have to have a personal aspect so like if he has to cancel on practice and he like i want him to be able to tell me why and not lie to me you know Mm -hmm. um but i also whenever i first started my band i actually had a different guitarist before him and i had to like sit down and talk with him i was like hey listen you're not going to hurt my feelings if you tell me you don't want to do this anymore. I just needed to be honest with me so I can move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and like absolutely no hard feelings from that. And I feel like you have to have that personal aspect to keep the peace. Um, but also I I told them when we first started too, I just wanted everybody to have fun. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if it's all business, it's not fun. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just, yeah. Because you started playing for fun, you know, it's because it's something that you love. Like, obviously, this is all of our passion. So Mm -hmm. I don't want to take the fun out of it and the enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, like, you have to kind of grind down on things sometimes. But that's just because I see the potential in everybody. And if you're not pushing constantly, then you're not going to get any farther. Mm. So... So for next question, do you have any pre like performance rituals or like saying? No, but we should start that. A uh, lone star, maybe another lone <laughs> star. <laughs> a red one. <laughs> I'm more of a Dos Equis guy myself. <laughs> I drink cheap. 
No, hey, no, hey, <laughs> hey, no, drink what you like. You drink, drink what works. Yeah. I, I always used to be a bartender, so I know all about just drinking what you like and drinking what you what works for you. <laughs> oh yeah. The people who would be like a Bud Light versus like a Bud Light versus a Miller Light. And it's like you ask, it's like you ask them a personal question. It's like, wait, what? I never drink Bud Light. The fuck. And this is but <laughs> this is 2018 before all the extra Bud Light shit nowadays. Yeah. But I remember. Even working at a country bar, I worked at a country bar. So like same way with the um, the certain kind of music and the people, the crowd too mm-hmm. as well. Um, that was Rebel Draft House over at Northgate too when I worked there. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Um, I don't know if they do they they may do live performances now too. I need to look at some venues. Out I here. think I've mm-hmm. seen them post some stuff on Instagram. That they I haven't were. even tried to book any places out here. Honestly, I need to. It's a booking out here is different especially because it's not a it's not a big like going stuff going on town necessarily yeah you know if there's an event it's kind of a an event you know what i mean or if there's ever any events it's always like at, you all already at one have time. to be in there you know what I'm then, saying? like yeah that's why i said i've been trying to make connections a lot though too because you have to like for for stuff like that you have to be in the in crowd already mm-hmm. um but i feel like I don't know if College Station really has a whole lot of people that will help you progress out here. I think they'll enjoy what you're doing, but they're not going to help you get farther, at least in the music scene. That's very true. We've yeah. had tons of people come up to us in the past, and they're like, oh, I know this person and that person. It's like, no, you're drunk. Well, <laughs> and just because you know them, it doesn't help you. It's like, yeah. okay, well, cool. Yeah, I know this person. but They might uh, think you do- suck. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. It's like actually like getting out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Actually getting stuff moving is the part that people forget. You yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, besides just no, it's like more... It, people say it's about who you know, but it's also about what you do and how you, yes. and how you know them too. Well, yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. That's why I said I've been trying to... Well, again, going back to making connections, I when I don't play gigs, I go out and watch other live musicians. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I go out and support people. I meet people. And like I went to go see Josh Ward play the, over this last weekend. Mm-hmm. I'd never met him or the band in my entire life, but I knew the lead guitarist or the the guitar player just by mutual friends. Really, and so I was able to get like hang out with the band afterwards and talk with them. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like it's that type of connection. Like you meet one person, it just kind of it's a domino effect. It was the same way with my last podcast uh, because they have a studio out here. Actually, matter of fact, if you do need a recording studio, shout out to Vortex <laughs> Studios. Um, I had my I had the bracelet on, but um, Nazar, one of the guys out on the podcast last time, he's an intern for Vortex, okay. and they do not only me- media as in like visual stuff like that, but also live performances and they're like little garage and stuff. But they also mm-hmm. do have a recording studio too as well. Yeah, and they were talking about also finding people who play music like y'all do as well, and actually getting them to promote that. Besides just because what they do is like mostly like pop. I would say I won't say rap or hip hop, but it's like almost like a pop. Or like a modern mix of all of it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's another whole nother scene too, is finding when it comes to recording songs, finding somebody who can mix your type of music. Mm. Cause that's what I struggled with, with my first mm. single was finding that. But also that was a big deal with the place that they recorded at. I liked it cause I heard the mixing and I was like, okay, I think that would relay to my music too, but I can't go to somebody who mixes, um, country. I mean, sorry, just straight rock or heavy metal and tell mm. them to mix my slow country song or even like r&b you yeah. know that's like it's yeah. huh i didn't even think about that yeah again there's so much stuff that people just don't realize that you're either limited to or have to do research on or just all that so have you ever mixed music before yourself no that's okay too much computer for me okay yeah i was about to say what because if you would know the different i guess I wish no, I that's some, a whole nother world in itself too God, I have you gotta who, pay somebody to do it i have friends who produce and stuff like that too and they have their beats for sale online and everything mm-hmm. and same way with the promotion part you know um especially like youtube because you can go onto youtube and find a like a, a type beat or like uh, any there's so many different beats that people just go online and grab and use off of youtube and people never know who made the beat you know yeah. and so do people do the same thing like that for country like with like i guess like melody for writings not just writings but like melodies like strums um like different like quick riffs and stuff like that that you can take and kind of like splice into your own music yourself you, you can but it's a gray area yeah mm-hmm. that's kind of vague so as far as melodies and stuff things can sound different when you have 
all the elements of a full band together. Mm -hmm. But a lot of stuff that's written is something in the past inspired it. Mm -hmm. And there's only so many chords, so many combinations that you can do in so many different orders until eventually everything's a copy of something. Yeah. But it's got an effect to it or it's sped up or slowed down. But uh, that's actually a issue we've ran into and not me and Kathy but me and the other band with writing we'll Mm -hmm. get something going and then the whole band's going we're like oh yeah this sounds great and then someone would be like wait a minute that sounds like and then we're like oh crap that is that I I think we was at that time now especially now and Prince said this year I mean years ago about how eventually everything's going to be a sample of a sample of a sample of a sample especially when it comes to music Mm -hmm. and I do it nowadays too where I'm listening to a song and I'm like wait a minute I know the sample from this. It was made like 40 years ago. Yeah. And go look up some old artists and find the same song that they sampled from they that. They remixed it or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's been a lot of those lately. But if you think about it too, all the songs that become number one hits, they don't sound like other songs. So you don't want your song to sound like something else because especially if it sounds like a super popular song that everybody knows, like they're going to relate your song to that popular song instead of it being your song. And I guess country's a lot more of a niche music market too, as well. Yeah. Especially when it comes to because you don't really get people um, who listen to a lot. You get people who listen to both, but I mean, people who are absolutely like indoctrinated into both sides of like pop and country. Yeah, you know. And but you have people in the middle with like um, what's a pop country artist you can think of? Pop Sam Hunt Jason was the first. Aldean. Oh, Jason Aldean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Really. Okay. Okay. I guess. The first time I heard Jason Aldean was like probably fourth grade, fifth grade. Oh, don't get like me that. wrong. Big mm-hmm. Green Tractor was the hit for a good while, and I listened to it all the time. I th- what, what song was it? I think I was Dirt Road or Anthem Kid. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Dirt. that is a perfect mix up right there. Okay. Of like a good pop and country song? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, where it just meshes, and it's not necessarily one or the other. Because he has that little, uh, I guess the, the actual chorus is actual that country yeah but then the verse he does once it speeds up and then the the tempo goes like a little bit faster yeah that's that little melody yeah you ever see yourself making something like that probably not no no i was raised on like the old country and i'm such a fan of 90s country Mm. um i think if i did a duet with somebody that would be different Mm -hmm. um but as far as making my own music i don't know i've kind of I'm a big fan of like Joe Messina and Miranda Lambert kind of music. Okay. Mm-hmm. So either I don't I don't even know what you'd consider Miranda Lambert. Is she technically like Nashville country? Nowadays, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but the songs that we play because we play like her early 2000s stuff. Yeah, so that's kind of when really everything was a crossover. in the early 2000s. That was the bridge. Yeah, that was when we went from having country music to everything was Nashville, except for yeah. smaller artists. I will say that there are a lot of people who enjoy country that go nuts for '80s music or throwback pop punk. I was about to say, how big was '80s country? Because '80s for music in general is one of just like the craziest decades. I think oh, yeah. the 80s gets mixed in with a lot of the 90s country. So if okay. I say I'm going to play 90s country and I throw in an 80s country in there, mm. I think those are similar enough that people don't necessarily distinguish them as different. And would that be your George Strait? Like George your, Strait's like 80s and 90s. 80, 90? And okay. 2000, God, George Strait's every decade. Yeah, George Strait's just <laughs> timeless. Timeless, yeah. 100%. Especially as a Texan. Yeah. Especially as a Texan. Oh, yeah. But He started getting big in the 80s, though, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Um, I think so. He was like late 80s. He's getting big in the 80s, and then I think the 90s is when he was kind of called the king of country music. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. We have to play some George. But that's another thing, like I said earlier, about how with every era of country music, like there was the Hank sound, there was all the other decades. It's kind of, I want to say cool, but I don't like that it happened. But yeah. how George Strait, his stuff used to be pure country music and then nowadays any new stuff that comes out is kind of pop country he's definitely mm-hmm. on the nashville side yeah now. and i mean i get why he would do it it's it's a money thing for sure mm-hmm. but when you get signed to a label and then you're told that you have to do things the way that they want you to do it you don't get your own choice anymore yeah, yeah i think like uh, that too i think just you have to change with the times you know yeah. just to stay not only stay relevant i mean he could he could easily retire, and yeah. people would still play his music f- forever. 
you know but i think especially where how old is george Strait right now Ooh. that's a google question old. That's a good, <laughs> let's all take a guess first <laughs> let's see i'm gonna say I'm a, 67 i'm gonna say 72 i'm gonna say 70 even let's see oh gosh we're all close together george Strait. what do we get if we win uh high five okay let's see george Strait is 71 oh look True. Wait, you said seventy even. I said seventy. We're smack down. Okay, uh, roughly. Here, right you there. get another high five. Yeah, say let's say look. <laughs> let's see. Born May eighteenth. Okay, so American countries. Music oh, so singer. he's about to be seventy two. Mm-hmm. Nice. Music singer, songwriter, actor, and music producer. That's the next question I was going to ask. Writing songs. Yeah. So, what? Uh, was the best way to phrase this question the best way. What? What personal elements do you put into your writing <laughs> when it comes to go ahead breakups <laughs> breakups? Ah, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like country music you have to have that a little I, bit. I so I am kind of in a space right now where like, yeah, it's it's so weird to say, but like I don't have a crush on anybody right now. Mm-hmm. Like I don't really have that feeling of any type of I guess love in that aspect. The music's your crush right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but. I'm also struggling to not have anything come to mind to write either. Um, I wrote my first song again after I moved back from Kansas, how to break up kind of thing. And that's when I was whipping out songs left and right. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's another thing about songwriting. You just, you can't force it or it's not going to sound good. So I could sit down and write a song right now, but it's not going to be, it's going to be mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. Um, The, best songs that i've written have been when i'm sitting there crying while i'm writing it to be honest hmm. um yeah <laughs> which I, huh. I mean like if it, if it pulls a good song it's kind of worth it in I, my opinion 100 <laughs> percent, like because that's where the real comes from yeah you know? and it's the real true raw emotion mm-hmm. for you what goes into like your writing process um a lot of times i'll either come up with a riff or something and i'll start toying around with it figure out what chords work with it and then other times, Kathy will send me something that's just a full song with just chords and lyrics. Mm-hmm. And then I'll put a melody to it and figure it out. We've bounced off of each other before where I've written, again, the full song. And he'll go in and write the stuff. Or he's written um, like a riff for, or a solo at the beginning. And it ended up working together. Mm-hmm. Um, the chord progressions were the same or close enough that we could rearrange it. But he's also written an intro before where he said, hey listen to this i listened to it and i think i wrote the song within that night yeah um and it's actually one that we're gonna record so nice nice so and i i was about to say because i've seen this before when uh, especially i've seen so many guys start to like rap and make music and stuff like that and i've seen people say like if you try to make music without any life experience or even like uh, not even make music but if you try to write write songs and actually put emotion in there without any life experience you're not going to get much out of it it just sounds oh, yeah. forced mm-hmm. that's like, like uh i don't know you you know who eddie murphy is yes right? yeah so he used to do a bunch of stand-up mm-hmm. and he would talk about when he was younger and he first started doing it because he started real young he was like the only thing i knew that was funny was farts mm-hmm. so that's <laughs> all he would make jokes about but it's pretty much the same thing if you don't have any life experiences you don't have nothing to write about you're just throwing out words mm-hmm so from a and this is my biggest thing with my podcast is i love philosophy in life and so and from a philosophical standpoint i've always not only believed known but seen as well that a lot of the best stuff comes when you're at your lowest you know a lot of the best i guess like it's like a field of uh, i guess when you're in the dirt the dirt's the most fertile place for stuff to grow. Yeah. You know? And, and the only way you can go is up. Exactly. Point. You know? Um, and I guess with, like, the cycle of life, with things always happening and stuff like that, it just starts over and gives you something new. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just, like, I think just the circle of life and death, you know? Yeah. Within our, but we can see that in our same lifetime and era and different eras for yourself of, like, you had the even you can talk about like us working at H-E-B, you know, the life of us working at H-E-B and then the death of that and then having to adjust from where we were in life from there mm-hmm. and then go on to that. And so I guess with like, my b- question with that is that all the adjustments you make in life and stuff like that, how does it really, 
how do the life adjustments play into your music as well and i guess like uh what's the best i'm trying to phrase this question the best way um i guess with so music is your life basically pretty much yeah basically so anything that your life has to do just goes back to music basically and at this it, point yeah mm -hmm. and just kind of like loads back in for that like you just have a, a computer for music a, a computer brain for music essentially at this point uh yes mm. i'm never not thinking about something in music whether it be um booking a gig writing a song what songs i need to practice the gig that we're gonna play where i have to drive to um who i need to talk to mm -hmm. like all that stuff marketing going and buying my own products like mm -hmm. there's just so much and making t-shirts too have you you started looking I'm, into i'm working into it t-shirts are pretty expensive we're mm -hmm. gonna get some um koozies and hats out soon though okay working Even, on that uh, shoot having posters like that yeah po posters were relatively they have places where you can like get good deals on them and stuff like yeah. that um but yeah no it's all do you have a youtube as well like a channel myself yeah. mm -hmm. please don't look at it oh no it's okay it's got like my school stuff on it oh. in some like freshman year videos with brace face oh you gotta, make, you gotta you gotta make a new one i'm watching <laughs> all of these as soon as we leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no you gotta make it cause i have one, same way with mine um i was like i have this regular youtube but then you gotta make that new one yeah and it's, i really think you'll see the gains from them too as well because once you start putting your music on there yeah and it's all it, it will exponentially send you my problem has been having um I guess the the finances to be able to buy the equipment that you need. Mm -hmm. I'm still buying equipment that I need for a regular show, to be 100% honest. And so like going in and having to buy a good camera, which thankfully I have a light that I use whenever I take my videos, but it's just there's there's so many pieces of equipment that go into it. Like a computer, I like I only have my iPad right now. Mm -hmm. So ah uh, oh yeah, you need a yeah. laptop for all that. Yeah. Mhm. Mm have you looked into making music videos like actual like being in a music video yourself and stuff yeah, like that? yeah so i have a cousin who is starting to do all that um and i have a lot of family in like the conroe and their friends have become my family but they've done a lot to support me and teach me uh, i guess about like the the electronic side of music mm -hmm. and uh, my cousin is starting to take pictures and work on music videos for another band that they have over there um and so he has offered to do a music video for me but i'm also we're trying to get back into the studio to record the song first because you don't can't do the mm -hmm. video before the song but i guess what, what going back to how i wanted to ask the last question um because now when you were just talking it, it hit me of how to actually ask this question yeah um yeah just like that it was gone damn um come on caleb uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there hold on hold on hold on <laughs> um does it, okay yeah does it feel like almost synchronized for you in the way your life has moved and then where you are now like has music flown into my I, life I the guess way not, it's supposed to or with like I said going through the breakup and then just everything flowing through just to get to where you are now i guess like i just went on, i went on a trip this week right mm -hmm. and i saw i was it was really freeing for me it was austin right and that same breath of like the difference between being in Austin and being in College Station, I just felt so much more free out there. And my mind was able to just kind of expand a little bit more. And I remember looking at the water in the creek when I was on a trail. And I was like, the water doesn't even control itself. It just goes with the flow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I guess like it, as you just had to learn to go with the flow of life too. And that oh, just kind of yeah. makes your kind of makes it easier for it's more of a flow for your music well too, that's well. what i meant too like mm. when i said instead of looking at long-term goals i look at short term i'm just enjoying the ride mm. honestly like just enjoying meeting the new people my goal has basically been to say if i die tomorrow i want to be happy with where i am today um so i don't want to be upset about where i'm not today mm -hmm. like i want to be happy with where i am but like i also don't want to sit there and just dwell on the fact that i'm not somewhere that i want to be in a year you know mm -hmm. like because you shouldn't and no nothing's done overnight yeah and that's something that something i've had to get over to as well especially like just between like all of us we all just make content you know what i'm saying yeah. just content for people to consume uh 
and I guess uh, putting yourself out there is one of the most scariest things in the world. Hundred percent. And I guess when was the moment when you like knew that like you're putting yourself out there in the most fulfilling way for yourself? I had a lot of change as far as confidence goes whenever I started music back around the second time, mm-hmm. and it just felt different. I don't. I genuinely don't know how to explain it, other than the fact that I just mentally knew I was ready. Mm-hmm. Like I was ready to pursue everything that I knew I was capable of pursuing. Mm-hmm. Um, I re- like. I don't even know how to explain it. I just knew. Like just timing is right, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just. I was not ready before. So, like I said, you grew up in church, right? And you, you yeah. still lean on, lean on that background too, as well. Just coming. I from don't church? go to church as much, but I'm also a person who believes that like you don't need to be in church to pray if you need to pray thank you like Mm -hmm. i will go driving in my car and just be like oh my god i haven't told god thank you for everything that he's given me lately you know Mm -hmm. like i'm just gonna sit here and pray Hmm. and i probably lean on god more than i ever have in my entire life now Mm -hmm. um and it just gives me a sense of peace and knowing that i can get through no matter what difficulty, what obstacle I have to go through. Like, I'm going to get through it. Mm-hmm. I've been through so much already. Like, what makes me think that I can't get through this small little thing? And do you have a place where you're like, do you have a place where you put your personal faith as well for yourself? Um, I'm kind of with Kathy. Just, mm-hmm. you don't have to be in church to pray. Mm-hmm. But uh, that and having a two-year-old, it's, you can't take that boy anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Mm-hmm. Just pray at home. Was was your having your son like really life changing for you? Well, I mean, it's life changing for everybody. But I guess how did it affect you when you had your son? Um, kind of makes you grow up because when he was born, I was twenty two. Mm. So I was working, I was a bouncer at Northgate and I was working at the Harley dealership. I knew you look familiar. Okay. <laughs> okay. I knew you. I was about to say, yeah, I've seen you somewhere before. Yeah. No, I used to have long hair though. Okay. I don't remember that, Jared. Yeah. I don't think we ever, well, other than that, that probably house saw party, you at a bar. that house party, you were there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh. Call station doesn't put bars and house parties on us. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Good times. But Yeah. No, then, like I said before, with practices and stuff, having to find places for them and all that, it's it was kind of difficult. But mm. as time progresses, I've got a little bit of a system down, and then eventually he'll be old enough. I'm like, hey, grab your iPad, grab some toys. Come on, let's go. Mm-hmm. Well, and having a support system there to be able to help you oh, on the yeah. days that you need it is huge. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, not even just with music. So he's getting his tonsils out tomorrow. Oh, wow. And uh, at four, he's two, two, two. He's little bitty. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, he's he's little, but he's big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's tall. He's a giant two year old. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, his tonsils are massive. So they're saying, let's just pull these out before they cause a problem. Hmm. But with the whole support system thing, my mom's taking them for a week, so I don't have to miss work. Mm-hmm. But uh, she obviously makes a lot more than I do because I can't <laughs> take a week off. <laughs> right? No, I, I, I had to. Do it. The reason I took this last week off was because of my birthday. So I was like, I, I, it'd been like maybe four years since I had my birthday Happy off. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Marge. When's your birthday? January 16th. January 16th, 98. Yeah. 98. So that makes, I've done this numerology thing with it people. It makes me old. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I mean, old is very relative. Yeah. So from a numerous, January, you said 16th? Yeah. So that makes you 1998. Ooh. That makes you a life path number eight. What does that mean? You're the goal oriented type. Yeah, yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, the <laughs> like almost like a business minded, yeah. um, That's very a Capricorn right there. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, I'm about to say January 16th. <laughs> when, when's your birthday, man? April 21st. So, ah, Taurus, you're, uh, let's see, day, the day after one of the best days in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have been born a few hours earlier. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> I work at a smoke shop too, so that's where <laughs> that's a lot of where this philosoph- philosophy and like working at the smoke shop too has really opened my eyes to uh, my interactions with people and stuff like that, and yeah. made it easier for me to do my podcast too as well because uh, I'm able to take people as they are, and I guess with that too, it's made it easier to kind of take myself as I am because I've 
and recently I've been going through this kind of culmination, I guess, over the past six months of a lot of things in my personal life. And then all of a sudden it's kind of like, okay, you're here and you know what you have to do now, you know? And really it's kind of like a, nothing else really matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. On like a ethereal level. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and for me it's just like, a, like I asked y'all earlier, is putting myself out there in the best way possible that's fulfilling for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's so many different ways you can put yourself out there. You know, and it's trying to find that like that way that's perfect for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not perfect for anybody else. Not perfect for you know, not even your parents and you know, even then like that. But just honing in on just you and your own skill sets, who you are, and your sense of individuality as well. Yes. So with that too, how much do your parents play a role in like who you are and like how much you've grown and where you are now? I feel like I'm a pretty independent person. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a, fa a family that's full of musicians, and I would not be where I am without a good portion of my family. Um, my parents come to a lot of my gigs and all that, and my dad's a drummer. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, they've done a lot for me. But I, again, goes along with the Capricorn and being goal-minded and business-oriented. Like, mm -hmm. I do a lot of this stuff myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very independent and i've just i don't know i i do a lot of stuff myself <laughs> life past seven you're also independent you're the not the solitude type not necessarily solitude but like you i think life past seven one of the tenets of those was that you find more knowledge in solitude and you almost have like a you'll you won't die on your hill but you're strong in your beliefs yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah no that's partly true mm -hmm. whenever i'm by myself it's whenever i do most of the writing that i do mm -hmm. but if there's people around or distractions i just can't do it mm -hmm. yeah same i'll go and take drives like i have a, a back road that i take every single time where mm -hmm. most of my songs have been written oh i i have a walk a trail that i walk around here yeah. whenever i'm like in here and like trying to edit a video i'm like ah and it's not coming out right i just gotta get up and go for a walk yeah. so you're a driver if you yes. if you're in that, that block yep hmm. yeah how do, how do you get through a, besides the driving like how do you get through a creative block besides like getting up and going to drive i have to clear my mind as much as possible mm. because at that point if i have a block it means i am stressed out and i have entirely too much going on and i need to take a step back figure out what i need to do um, in, in all other surroundings in my life and work through those. And it usually just comes to me after that. Mm -hmm. So and for you, um, whenever I get a block, I just kind of take a break. That's kind of how I am with everything. Even work. If mm -hmm. I'm trying to get something done and it's not working out, just put everything down, walk away for five minutes and come back to it. But with writing and being creative and all that, and just, there's some days was, it's not today. Mm. Yeah, yeah, honestly. So I'll just hang it up or you'll just sit there and get frustrated. And then it's, it's kind of something like music's been something that I lean on. It's an outlet. It's something I like to do. But I don't want to ever get myself in a situation where I'm just trying to force something that's not coming naturally. Because mm -hmm. then it just kind of makes you not want to do it. Uh, and i think for especially when you get like stuck with something that you're passionate about too it creates a almost i say an unhealthy frustration almost yeah you know because you're like well, it's not your outlet anymore at that point it's mm -hmm. it's a frustrating job that you feel like you're trying to do mm -hmm. and you're trying to find like you're trying to put all these elements into your think it, as soon as you start thinking too much about it you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and you're trying to put all what you think you should put in there you know instead of just actually feeling it well you it's know? so frustrating because usually like you know you know it and mm -hmm. so when you're trying it's it's like it's on the tip of my tongue but it's not coming out like you just said when you said you have that one idea and you got to write it down right there yeah. mm -hmm. because you'll be gone in the next second yeah mm -hmm. i've gone <laughs> i've gone at work before when i'd have a line pop in my head i'd like run to the bathroom and sing it on a voice memo and then run back that's to my probably that's <laughs> honestly the best way to do it too because yeah. like if you know exactly what you got yeah instead of like because write it down sometimes it just doesn't come out when you write it it doesn't come yeah. out when you write it down well no and that's something that i 
get so frustrated with because if I'm in a spot that I can't actually sing it, because I'm not only writing lyrics, I'm doing lyrics and a melody at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I have to have the actual voice projected, like the tune. Like I have to be able to hear the tune and the lyrics going together. Mm-hmm. So especially gotta, when you layer it in on top of the music yeah. too. And I've I've told people flat out in conversations, I'm like, listen, I don't mean this in a rude way by any means, but a line just popped in my head. I gotta go write it down. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh no, a hundred percent. Like, and I think that's even more. Just going based off what you said earlier, it goes uh, back to just how you operate from your standpoint as a former manager and stuff like that. Of you know, you want to be able to tell somebody and be honest. Hey, look, I, I right now I got something really good in here. Yeah. I just got to go get it down. And so, really, just from a place of on- coming from a place of honesty. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had somebody come up to me when I was working at HB one time, and they said listen, I am so hungover, to be honest, and I don't want to be here right now. I said, good, I don't want you here right now because you're no use to me right now. So I'm going to send you home as fast as possible. They said, good, we're on the same same idea, the same wavelength. I said, great, that's all I needed to know. Like, just be honest with me. From a word standpoint, it sounds ugly. But from just a pure context standpoint, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Mm because I wouldn't want to be there if I was hungover, Mm -hmm. you know? So. I've, I remember seeing a lot of people over there hung over too. Yeah, that's, that's all of College Station. <laughs> that was, I remember being in that parking lot, and that was the best way to get over some of the You sweat. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You remember coming out there seeing us wild in that parking lot. Oh my gosh, I felt so bad for y'all. Oh, it was so hot. I would come out there, and my deal was I didn't care what you were doing as long as the work was done. Mm-hmm. So if there were no carts out there, got no complaints, if I wasn't going to get in trouble, Sit down. I wouldn't want to be what you're doing. Just like, I wouldn't want to be doing what you're doing. Got any weird H-E-B stories? I got yelled at one time when I was working in Burnham for not having bakery garlic bread at 10 o'clock at night when we had closed in 30 minutes. Like, I got my butt chewed out by this lady. She goes, I cannot have lasagna and salad without my garlic bread. I need to go make some right now. Ma'am, I don't even know how to make the garlic bread, number one. <laughs> Ma'am, it's 10. Number two, the store's about to close. I have a line out here. I'm the only manager here. All my bosses are gone. I was like, I can take your name and number and get you your garlic bread tomorrow first thing. I can. Well, yeah, go ahead and take my name and number. And I said, okay, well, can you write? Well, no, I don't want to give it to you anymore. I don't want to give you my name and number. What, what do you want me to do? I feel what like, do you want? I feel like all artists work retail. God, it's we, brutal. Yeah, do we all work retail? No. Not anymore. Okay. I don't think I could go back to retail. Mm. I did for a little mm. bit. Um, there was a little while I was working at a tractor supply. And you worked at tractor supply? Did yeah. you bring home any chicks? No. Okay. No, I hated That's that fine. job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it was helping people find parts for weed eaters, and I'm looking at them like, should you even be using a weed eater? <laughs> Are you licensed for this? <laughs> I went to Tractor Supply for... I almost bought a kayak from Tractor Supply just because they have them out there. Yeah. You should have. Kayaking is fun. Well, okay. it, was, it was kind of fun sometimes. Like, they would... Uh, you no, know, they sell all the, like, zero-turn lawnmowers and stuff. Yeah. So, they had a... Uh, <laughs> you do donuts in <laughs> Well, yeah, but it was like a test drive day. <laughs> so, we had them all in this little fenced-in area in the parking lot and customers could drive them around. Yeah. And there was nothing else to do, so we were trying to get people to go look at mowers. And me and one of the <laughs> managers are just racing around the parking lot. You got to make it look fun. It was fun. It's a marketing tactic, right there. It was. Yeah. It actually worked. We Did got a couple people. Yeah, we sold like Hell three of yeah. them. But yeah, that's the way to do it. Some of them were too fun. I like pulled back on one of the zero turns and then slammed it forward. You popped a wheelie Dude, in a lawnmower. Yeah, the bad boy zero turns. They oh got some tours. So how do you like your job now? Oh, I mean, it's a job. But I mean, like, I guess you said you're a assistant. What, what are you doing? I, so my title is legal assistant, but for the type of work that we do, I'm basically a paralegal. Mm. Um, So I work directly under the attorney and, like, help him with all that stuff. I love the, like, the work atmosphere between me and my boss. We get along so well. Like, he... Um, he was attorney in the military, was in the military for a really long time. So he's super organized and is used to that organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm an extremely organized person. And so like the things that we ask for, the things that we're nitpicky on, neither of us get mad about. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've both been very open minded about new ideas, which I love too. Um, the only thing that I've had a downside with, with my job is being able to 
do my job and do music Mm -hmm. because music is getting to the point where it's like full time now. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where my mind is 24 seven. So it's really hard to be in a, eight to five job and thinking about your second job all day long and i met some at the at the shop when i was working um i met someone who his name's orion burrow oh yeah, uh, yeah. we yeah. were just talking about him yeah um he, he came, came up with my, he's probably like my first facebook friend i should add him <laughs> yes you know i saw him at the shop and he was talking about i don't know how we even got on the topic but uh, he said he used a nine to five corporate job and yeah. he, he quit his job and started doing music and he said i make a quarter of what i used to make yeah. but i'm happy yes you know he's i'm i'm very satisfied and fulfilled with my life and i wanted to have him probably gonna have him on a podcast too sometime too but yeah. it was really cool to hear him talk about how like even just have i had a degree i had the big job money everything house he said and all of it just wasn't for me you know what I'm saying? Like his mind was there, but his heart wasn't. Exactly. Yeah. And then he finds music, and now he's in the past, what, six months or so? He's, like, exponentially grown yeah. you know, in that same way. So it's really something to, it's something to see, especially um, as a creative person, seeing other people, you know, start to do stuff themselves. And I, that's why I like this podcast is that I want people to be able to come and talk about the cool stuff they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And be able to use this to promote not only you and what you do, but also like just let you let, let you get everything off your chest. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Especially as an artist with a lot of stuff on your mind and you really get time to actually like just de-stress and actually talk and just actually just be a person. You know and what I'm saying? And talk to somebody who actually understands it too. Exactly. On, on a, I, I'm not a music person. Uh, I mean, I make music here and there, but I can understand on a general basis like scales and at least like the promotion and business side of music. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and we don't even get that much time to necessarily sit down and talk about what goes on or what stresses us out as far as the music business goes, just because when we are together, it is business. It's work, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's fun, but it's still work. There's things that need to get done and it's not all play around, you know, Mm -hmm. so. But it's that that yin and yang of like having a good balance between work, life. And then, like I said, just the biggest thing that you want to usher in with especially with any band you're in just having fun yeah Mm -hmm. you you can read it in a band 100 percent. you can tell when there's tension you can tell when people actually enjoy what they do and i think that's any workplace Mm -hmm. you can visibly see when somebody is enjoying what they're doing or if they're miserable Mm -hmm. um and when i so when i moved back like i said i was doing a lot of things to help with mental health and one thing was making sure that i got rid of at least 90% of the stress that was in my life. And so I made a lot of amends with friends and, but I also made sure that like I was doing things that made me happy. Um, and so when people tell me that they get a new job or they're doing this, they're doing that. The first thing they ask them is, do you enjoy it? Does it make you happy? Because I think that is so important and I feel like mental health is pushed aside so much and it shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think this world would be a lot better place if people paid more attention to mental health. Do you think a sense of um, a sense of fulfillment, well, not not just fulfillment in the sense of doing something outside of yourself, but I think for on an average person, what's the best? Not only just from a faith a faith standpoint, a material standpoint, and a doing things standpoint. I guess what would the best way for the average person to find their true fulfillment and happiness? From I your- think you have to work on yourself and right all your wrongs because that's the first step that I took was sitting back and realizing I can sit here and point the fingers all day long and say this person did that to me and all that good stuff. But like, what did I do? What am I doing? That's making other people unhappy. What am I doing that's making myself unhappy? Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't comfortable in my body. Like I started working out, you know, like Mm -hmm. I lost 50 pounds and congratulations. Thank you. And I'm not, I'm not fishing for compliments. Oh no, no, no. I I got a compliment. I feel so. (laughs) (laughs) I do love fishing. (laughs) No, No, but like, I feel so much better about myself because I took the time to take and find what I knew made me unhappy and fixing it you know mm-hmm. like it's just figuring out what it is and just figuring out how to fix those problems it's a, i think the time it's, it's nasty work though you yeah. know of having to like uh, 
go through i guess for go through all Soul those like searching emotions you know it's hard i'm going through that again right now mm-hmm. and you for you do you like ever think of a context in the same for both of you do you ever like think of a context in the same nasty emotion that you had in that context shows up right then like how you feel about yourself not, not how you feel about yourself but even like if you're like say you're in an argument with someone and you remember it this is me personally so like i'll be like like something that happened and i guess the exact emotion i was feeling at the time is still in there from that same context you have to learn to let things go yeah and it is 100 percent the hardest thing um you just you got to move on you can't change what happened in the past you can either like like i righted some wrongs with some friends i did some things that i don't think were good and so i went back and i said i can't change what happened but i'm here to tell you that i'm apologizing I'm not looking for you to be my friend anymore. I understand that what I did was wrong. But, like, I do want you to know that I'm genuinely sorry for what I did. And it won't happen again. And I will never treat somebody that way again. Like, you just have to, like, grow yourself. You can't keep being the person that was not good. I don't know. You Mm -hmm. just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You just got to do it. I've been on that kind of wave of... I don't necessarily good and bad is kind of like it's the same breath, you know. Yeah. Um, because I have that yin yang right there, you know. Um, you have the uh, the positive and negative side, you know. And I think that without the same way with like going into your music and producing stuff that's beautiful, without that negative, you wouldn't be able to get that positive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you have to have that that sense of like the sense of mud and dirt. You know what I'm saying? For it's stuff okay to actually. To, yeah, but it's mm-hmm. okay to like be hurt it's okay to be angry sometimes but Mm. you can't let it stay that way Mm. you have to move on at some point i think i think for the just overall just like mental health of a i think the word of it is habitus is the necessarily the mental health of a society and just like um or the mental health of just a community in a sense and i think in that same breath that a lot of people could take what you just said and like letting go of just everything you know and stuff yeah. that just doesn't even like i said earlier doesn't even matter you know i think a lot of people bottle up their emotions too and i try to get through to people like it is okay to feel emotions mm-hmm. all of them like not just happiness you don't have to be happy all the time it's mm-hmm. okay to have a bad day yeah but just understand you need to wake up the next day and like move on yeah hmm Preaching to the choir, preaching to everybody yeah. now. Yeah, that's, that's we're getting ba- deep now. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's the best part of my podcast too. Is that you know I I get a raw, uncut perspective from people, you know, and yeah. it's nothing that's like you don't have to fake anything. You can just be you and just say what you need to say, you know. And same thing with your music, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just getting it out and just saying what it needs to say. Do you think that? Do you think that if you didn't have this outlet, you'd feel the same way? I think I would still be in a super low place, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I did some things to get out of it, and I think I would have progressed and gotten better, but I don't think I would be as happy as I am right now mm-hmm. had I not done it, because that is the one thing that fulfills me is music. Mm-hmm. Like, I was missing that when I was at my lowest, and and so it's just the piece of me that, I don't know, just kind of mm-hmm. f- fills the circle. I don't know. So when you're like going through those like moments of having to like I guess un go through like why you're mad and like let letting go of things, um, I just had I just had the best way to phrase this in my head. Oh, uh, dang it! Ah, dang it! I just <laughs> lost it. Um, when you're letting go and um, forgiveness, forgiveness. Yeah. How much of not only forgiving others but forgiving of yourself did you have to do? Forgiving, there's some people who have done me wrong, like Mm -hmm. wrong, wrong. And I got to a point where I had to understand that they were probably in the same place that I was when I was my lowest and treating people not right. And so you just have to understand that they're just not ready to get better yet and Mm -hmm. just hope and pray that they will kind of wake up one day and just say, I want to be a better person. Mm -hmm. Like you can't change somebody else. But that's another thing too is like understanding that you can only – have control of your own actions you cannot make somebody else do something that they don't want to do um and that was kind of a changing point for me too like people are going to do what they want to do um and i recognize that in myself i could change 
how I was treating people. Mm-hmm. And from then on out, I was like, I'm like, I, I, I just don't want to treat people the same way. Mm-hmm. And I want to be a better person. I want to be a happier person. I want to be a more confident person. Like I want to be the person that people look up to. And mm-hmm. that was kind of a big goal for me too. Is like, I want a little girl to look at me and be like, I want to be like her one day. And, and not just because of looks or whatever. Like I want her to say, Oh my gosh, I love who she is as a person. I want to be just like her. Mm -hmm. And I want to be that person that she can look up to. I don't want to, I don't know. I just, yeah. You want to be a role model. Yeah. 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 Which is, I mean, it's, it speaks a lot to your character of, again, how you want to put yourself out there. You know what I'm saying? And going back, uh, because I was talking about this on a podcast months ago about how to not give a damn in a good way. Yeah. You know, because you can do it in both ways. You know, I've done I've done it in the worst ways possible. You know, after I got fired from the job and stuff yep. like that. I mean, life just <laughs> after that, you know, yeah. but I mean, it was with and going back to it without that, I wouldn't be as happy and as capable of things that I am now. If I hadn't had that happen. I think sometimes you get forced out of situations that aren't meant for you. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you need something to push you so that you can progress in life. And it's ugly when it does. too. Yeah. I think that's that's the biggest part of life is that like, you know, you feel what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? I guess some people don't have a sense of what they're supposed to do or what they should do in life. But I've realized now is that like... There's outside forces in life that will push you towards what you need to do. Yeah. You know? It's just how hard you fight it back, honestly. Mm. Oh, God. And, yeah. And And the consequences are, I guess, like, being able to live life and see it, you know, for yourself and in your own life. And I guess my biggest thing with my podcast now is how how to help others in a way of getting to this point mentally as well but also like remembering that it's not necessarily it's not necessarily like a you 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 thing you know what i'm saying take yourself out of the context you know mm-hmm. and i guess oh, what's the i think you have to have enough self-worth in yourself though too to be able to mm-hmm. walk away from situations when you need to it's the, i think it's the yin yang you know yeah. back to is the, the balance of balance just balance you know what i mean of having yeah. a strong sense of self well, and surrounding yourself with good people, too. Mm-hmm. That's that's another thing that I did. I made sure that, like, when I came back this time around, that I would be around people who supported me as much as I've always supported people. And I have finally found those people, and I'm so much happier. Like, I don't have to sit there and worry about if they're going to talk bad about me behind my back. Mm-hmm. Like, I can go there and fully and confidently say that, like, they're always going to say good things. They're always going to uplift me. And... I, that all goes it, everything goes hand in hand mm-hmm. like it it all comes back around full circle like on life perspective how do you feel about like just the way your life has moved and to get to where you are now yeah it's been kind of wild but i think mm-hmm. everything that's happened kind of happens for for a reason mm-hmm. but uh there was a lot of times so when i was with my son's mom she was always you need to stop doing music you need to do this and that and i would think about it and i could just never bring myself to do it and then it just it was really a bad time altogether Mm -hmm. and i didn't want to leave because i didn't want to lose my son and then one night she ended up going crazy and kind of got an assault charge so Mm -hmm. that worked out in my favor so now i've got my son she sees him on sundays but Mm. i think everything as far as that, you know, like we talked about before, how having my son affected me. And I said, well, it makes you grow up fast. Mm-hmm. Like back then, I was content if I worked a part-time job, had enough money for rent and some beer. Mm-hmm. But now, like, I'll go to work, and then every paycheck, I got a separate account that I put money in. And whenever he's 18 or 21 or whenever I feel he's responsible enough to handle that amount of money, mm-hmm. I'll be like, here you go, you're set up. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I guess the best way for me to say is we're, we're like in an era of real maturity, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I say like I say real maturity just outside of the sense of just 
an adult that pays bills and goes to work. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Adult, adulting is hit hard now. There's no turning back at this point. But the actual maturity of besides being a person, you know, and like you said, with being able to confront people yeah. and, you know, and tell them sorry for what I did. Yeah. You know, that takes a level of letting go of pride, but also a level of maturity yes. that's almost exponential you know and i yeah. think that a lot of our society nowadays can definitely use i think it's taking the victim mindset too i think everybody at some point in their life has like a victim mindset to them mm-hmm. um and and you just gotta get rid of that like everybody's going through something yeah always yeah for sure but even that and like with the whole adulting thing i was talking to an older guy i worked with and uh just in my life i was kind of thinking and is there ever going to come a time where I don't feel like I'm just winging it? No. And so this guy was like, I think he was 55, 56. And I was talking to him about it. And he was like, every day I wake up and I'm still winging it. So mm-hmm. I was like, I guess that's that. I saw something not too long ago that was like um, about parents messing up on something with their kids. And it said, you have to recognize that this is your parents' first time doing this too. This is still new to them, you know? Oh my gosh. Like just because it's like the kid is young and it's their first time for doing things, it doesn't mean it's not the parents' first time too. Mm-hmm. So I, I had the same realization going through my own breakup and heartbreak and stuff like that of like, wow. I was like, I can't imagine being in a relationship and having kids <laughs> and having a job and the mortgage due. Yeah. And then you got relationship problems on top. Like, you have relationship problems when you have kids? Mm hmm. What? No time for that. What? No, there really isn't. And you have a job and the mortgage due and you got a car payment? No. And y'all share an account? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, it just made me realize how trivial the stuff I was thinking about, you know, but also appreciate my parents a lot more mm-hmm. because they're also both just individuals. You know what I'm saying? Outside of the relationship that they're in, even outside of how our relationship you know what i'm saying yeah my my parents were individuals for 30 years before i was here you know what i'm saying and so and then that helped me hone in on who i am personally as an individual and also realize that you never really you never really escape your parents necessarily yeah. because you're you're a source you're the derivative of from a calculus standpoint because once, <laughs> once i learned derivatives and then it was just amazing. I was like, oh, that's what derivatives mean. Yeah. Especially with chess and how, like, with chess, a lot of things are the same, just in different sequence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so in that same breath, you know, with parenting, um, life, um, especially our lives at the same time, we've lived a bunch of different lives, but we all have gone through that same experience of having to grow and mature through it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And some people can go through those same experiences that we've all had and get the complete opposite from it. Yeah. You know it's what I'm saying? It's how you take it. It's like you can either take it and grow from what you're going through or you can use it as a victim mindset. Mm-hmm. Again, everybody goes through something. It's just how you react to the problems that you're going through. That's one thing I had to get over to. I was like, the last couple of weeks, I was like, can people change? You know? Yes. I fully believe that people can change because I've done it myself. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, I think there are people that are good at faking it Mm -hmm. and they don't actually change. Um, But I think the people who have truly sat back and done some soul searching with themselves and are really, really trying to make amends, you'll visibly see it, though. Mm -hmm. And they won't ever stop showing you because they're actually changing their entire life. They're not just changing just to show off for one person. Mm -hmm. And that, and I think from going back to that, it just goes back to you're doing it for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're doing it for that. You're not doing it for anybody else. You're not doing it for to look good. Well, you're doing it. I mean, obviously, we all want to look good and stuff like that. Yeah. But, I mean, you're doing it just for the sense of you need a better you for you and for other people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we're all, like, same thing with your band. You know what I mean? Same yeah. thing with the band. You got to be the best you you can because you can't let the band members down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that good old philosophy you're bringing in here. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to be selfish, but you got to figure out the balance to it. Mm. And it's got to be a positive kind of selfish because you can't, you can't support other people if you're not mentally supporting yourself, in Mm. my opinion. I've done this is the negative selfish too. It's like, yeah, 
like my life been a downward spiral before you know what i'm saying and especially not know i guess not knowing when your life's on a spiral you know yeah. and you don't see it and then you land and you're like oh shit you look up and six months are gone and you're like damn i think that's why it's important to have good people surrounding you though too because mm-hmm. they'll be the first ones to sit back and want you to be better mm-hmm. and so i think they'll they'll tell you like i have i have my two best friends colton and carly um they have like sat me down and said look this is what we see from our standpoint um whether you want to take it what we say or not is your choice but like this is what we're seeing and i value their opinion so much that i took it mm-hmm. wholeheartedly like right. in a positive way of like they're just telling me this because they want to see me in a better position so i, I had to laugh real quick i was thinking of colton carly Carthy, kathy what? I, I thought Colton, Carly, Kathy. I was like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> they all start with a C too? No, they're K's. Ah. Uh, I know. Dang. No, I'm the third wheel all the time, but they love me anyway. So I'm Caleb with a C, I understand. Next. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We already did high five. A couple times. <laughs> yeah. This uh, we, How long y'all think we've been going so far? Probably. I don't know. I feel like we've been talking for like an hour. It's an hour and a half on this podcast. Oh, seriously? So yeah, no. That's uh, This is why I like this. It's because time just evaporates. Yeah. You know? And like I said, there's no sense of, like I said, there's no sense of where you need to be. It's just getting everything out there. Well, we haven't talked in forever either. Mm-hmm. So we had a lot to catch up on. And as like I said, uh, seeing that you were doing your music, I was like, you know what? I need to get back into what I'm doing too. I was like, let's yeah. just culminate. You know what I'm saying? Okay, coming from a marketing standpoint of what I need to understand, where have you seen me? <laughs> Is it just on uh, Snapchat? Just literally on Snapchat. Okay. Yeah. I'll, okay, and I I'll saw you. It. Well, and the fact that you had your pictures and you actually had the... Um, your venues and everything your schedule oh, down yeah my little i was flyers. like she's real i was like she's actually getting yeah. like getting down to it like yeah. and it was like like i said i just remember you playing for us back in the day yeah you know and i was like damn she used to play for us at the parties and stuff yeah and now she's getting to the point where she's actually performing for other people you know that's been like the coolest thing ever um I, I don't know. I think it's kind of badass whenever mm. people say, oh, my gosh, yeah, I knew her from back in the day. It's like, I want to be that person, you know? It's really, it, it's... I want people to say that they knew me. It's so... Even it's, if they still don't know me. <laughs> it's cool to see. I, I can't really say anything else. It's just really cool to see when you see the people who you came up with doing yeah. good as well. Yeah. You know? Well, and you've, like, it's so cool to see the actual progress happening, too, mm-hmm. in action, you know? And we really started roughly around the same time. Like, uh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, from a taking it seriously standpoint, too, as well. Mm. Yeah. Because, like, we're kind of, like, funning around and, like, I make music, I do that and that. But then, like, once you actually, like, I'm, I'm putting stuff it's out like, there. like, crap, I'm there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm exactly. there. <laughs> and, it, and really, like, you blink and it's just, a, it's only four years, you know? Yeah. It's just so quick, you know? And in that four years, so much has happened and you're like, wow. But like you said, you're just enjoying the ride and yeah. enjoying it. Mm-hmm. I think that's so important because if you're not enjoying it, then why are you doing it? Exactly. That thing is the best way to end this podcast right there. <laughs> I honestly think so. Because we're going, like I said, it's hour, 27 minutes so far. Yeah, do y'all, y'all have to practice tonight? No, we practice on Monday. Monday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's the best place to end this podcast off. This was a really great podcast, too, good. as well. Yay. Yeah. How do y'all, how do y'all feel about it? Good, yeah. You're good? Good? Yeah. Good. This is your first podcast. Yeah. This is your first yeah, podcast? No, it's my second. Really? At least for music, yeah. I'll Season probably be on a third veteran. one next month. Huh? <laughs> Season veteran. <laughs> I mean, you got to get yourself out there already. I never thought my voice would sound good on a mic, so this is pretty I mean, it's kind of, it really translates. I mean, if you already sing really good, I mean. No, like, I don't like the way my voice sounds whenever I talk. So hearing it, like, on here, I'm like, oh, I don't sound half bad. That's yeah, like, no. It's yeah. kind of cool. Oh, mm-hmm. I was nervous about that, too. I put on the headphones. I was Sounding like, weird. I got to hear myself. Talk. Yeah. Oh, no, the, the, the yeah, fir- welcome to the club. The first time hearing yourself talk is, like, at least for me, it was it's like, cringy. Oh, it's like i'm just never gonna say anything ever again <laughs> but then like i mean 100 podcasts i'm gonna quit now 100 podcasts later here we are yeah oh, you know, yeah. yeah that's yeah. insane mm-hmm. congrats I, the first podcast i did was like all by myself when like the dasani water and stuff like that yeah. was like well i realized i was like i could all these would have been youtube videos back then you know but i was just putting them all on spotify and now like again once you realize like from my marketing and everything it's like there's just a better way to do it mm-hmm. you know so yeah it's going to be exciting to see where we end up in the next two to three years. Yeah. And I am definitely want to catch up on another podcast in the future, especially once we're both more established and in different spots. And see how far we've That's come. That's going to be... An update. We're just going to put that... We're going to pin that for the future. Yeah. And then we're going to get back to it. Yeah. But yeah. So, 
uh, one last time, go ahead and state your names and what y'all do. Kathy Volan, singer-songwriter from Burton, Texas. Jared Thompson, I'm a guitarist from Spring, Texas. Say less. And Caleb Jackson, <laughs> both the director, host, and producer of the Caleb Jackson Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video as well. And also, uh, Spotify? Spotify, Spotify, Apple Music. Mm-hmm. Um, follow me on Facebook. Follow her everywhere. Yeah. And listen, to, what's your new single called? Uh, you Got Me. You Got Me? Yeah. Say yeah. less. Hey, but if you, if you follow me on Facebook, you got to spell my name right. And it's C-A-T-H-E-Y. C-A-T-H-E-Y. Yeah. Don't like, forget it. Like Cat Ka- Hey. Like Cassie with a lisp. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kathy. Yes. <laughs> all right. But this has been the Caleb Jackson Podcast. Thank y'all for coming on. Thank this you. has been really nice. Yeah, thanks Thank for you. having us. Yes. All right. And then until next time, y'all. Peace. <laughs>